We were all following this. Browns quarterback Baker Mayfield reached out to Giants quarterback Daniel Jones yesterday to clear the air after Mayfield's comments about Jones and GQ went viral on Tuesday. Here's what Mayfield had to say about his talk with Daniel Jones. It had nothing to do specifically about Daniel, about the winning and stuff, but, you know, I reached out to Daniel because all that blew out of, you know, way out of hand, and I wanted him to know how I felt, and I've heard nothing but great things from Saquon and Sterling Shepard, uh, guys that, you know, have a lot of respect for him and that I, you know, respect their opinions, and so I uh, just wanted to clear the air with him, um, and, you know, it is what it is. Is this kind of a lesson learned, do you think, for you, too? Is this, does uh, this make you wary of um, interviews or just... Yeah, you know, you can't trust anyone. Um, so, I mean, it's taken out of context, but at the same time, that was back in April, which is why, you know, it's astonishing that it's that big of a deal right now. Okay, so there's Baker Mayfield. You just heard Lewis Riddick say he needs to just take it back to football, and that sets up the first of what are going to be our timed topics today. I posed it earlier. This is going to be boom or bust for the Browns. This is not going to be a middle-of-the-road season no matter what. So give me 90 seconds on the clock and give me predictions. Will it be boom or bust for the highly touted Cleveland Browns this year? Tannenbaum, go. I'm going more towards bust because one year ago, guys, Freddie Kitchens is coaching four players in the running back room. He is trying to play chess on a national stage. He's going against two of the very best in Mike Tomlin and John Harbaugh. In pro football, coaching matters. On paper, they're better, but they're going to have a lot of issues to deal with, so I'm going more towards We bust. didn't mention that when we talked about this in our previous hour, Marcus. How concerned are you about the inexperience in the head coach? I'm, I'm concerned about the inexperience because of the personalities and the youth. We keep talking about the, of the talent that they've amassed. They're young. This is a young football team. When adversity hits like it will for every NFL football team, you've had personalities on this football team to show that they will lose their mind. I'm from the Midwest, and I root for the Lions. We're talking about the Cleveland Browns, okay? <laughs> it's a boom already. They're relevant. For right now, Jay. If they make for the right playoffs, now. that's a win for them. I, I, if they make the playoffs, that's a win. To me, that's a boom. But they're a long way away from making the playoffs. Let me ask you this. Big combustible personalities. First-time head coach, as Mike mm -hmm. just said. He was the running backs coach a year ago at this time. You've been in sports all your life. Does that concern you? It concerns me when you don't have the talent that they do. They're really talented. And Joku, Chubb, they got Hunt in the backfield. If Baker becomes a franchise-level quarterback, he can live up to the height. they're counting on Baker to be the yeah, leader, but, but right? He's the guy they're that, leaning on. That, that's my thing. Like, this is different in this sport. Talent in this sport doesn't always equate to you having a winning record. It just means you have good players. The Eagles tried it. That's exactly right. They called themselves the dream team. That went badly. Let's get to another one here. This came up in our, our pre-show meeting this morning, talking about how completely meaningless the preseason games seem to have become. There was a time when these third preseason games, you would see the starters and the stars play into the second half. Teams are talking about not playing these guys at all, even in week three of the preseason. We may not see Aaron Rodgers. We will not see Carson Wentz. And so it does pose the question. I'm putting 90 seconds on the clock. In the next 10 years, will there still be preseason games in the National Football League go? I would say maybe not the way they are today because joint practices is really the new trend we're seeing. And that's a way you could script the game situations to get ones versus ones ready. You could put quarterbacks out there. You want to see blitzes, red zone, third down. So I think as the sport evolves, we could see less preseason games and maybe we tackle. No preseason games. Will they do away with preseason entirely? I don't think entirely, but maybe greatly reduce it. What do you think? They won't do away with it entirely, but it'll become more and more less important. And you won't see any starters uh, playing in the preseason. We're, we're already there where you see these quarterbacks not participating, but it'll get to a point where guys that are tenured and have played a long time, they won't play at all during kinda, the preseason. Kind of like Greenies Le'Veon Bell. Yep. Well, uh, Le'Veon Bell's not going to play, and I'm all for yeah. it. I mean, look, if you get hurt in a, if, if Le'Veon Bell gets hurt in a preseason game, you have to find someone else to host the show because I, I, I wouldn't be here. We, we, we did, month. Stephen A. Smith. I, I'll never, I'll never <laughs> get through that. How, how, how about the NFL teams and players show you how much it means? The Cardinals drafted number one to Kyler Murray, a 5'9 quarterback. And the first thing they tell us is, wait till week one. Right. So what does that tell Absolutely. you? Absolutely. They're not Absolutely. making it a priority, so why should we? I think it'll be two games eventually. 
had a regular season be 18 games and make sure they take care of the players for the extra Well, season. that's the other question is do they add to the regular season because these games, they, are, they have value even if they don't mean anything. I think they add to the postseason, another round of the playoffs, more TV dollars. So I think you shift a preseason game or two, Jalen, yeah, like you uh -huh. mentioned, and tap on another round of the playoffs. But I have one well, more sir. I wanted to bring up here, and this is really why I wanted to make sure Jalen was with us. Because of some comments that were made by former NBA first-round pick Royce White, he had very strong words about the roster construction of the Los Angeles Lakers and basically said Carmelo Anthony isn't on the team because he's being blackballed. He lays the blame on one man in these comments. I want you to hear them. Melo is absolutely being blackballed. He's one of the realest in it. He's one of those dudes that, you know, he ain't like me. He don't talk like brash and, and straightforward like that, but he has those morals and principles, you know? And another question is, while a guy like LeBron is walking around here like he's the face and voice of the players, how is he letting his banana boat brother hang out there in the wings and they go sign Jared Dudley and not Carmelo? If anybody watching this thinks that Jared Dudley can hold Carmelo's jock strap, I'll slap him. So uh, that, that's obviously a somewhat inflammatory comment there. And, and so let me turn to you. Put the 90 seconds on the clock and go. Do you believe Carmelo Anthony is being blackballed in the NBA? Yes, I do, because... There are 450 people getting played to play the sport this year. I would say even if you didn't like his game because it's mid-range based and felt like he didn't fit, he could still have a roster spot between 11 and 15. If him not to have that opportunity lets me know that they are not having him in the league, not just because of his play. I see. So here's the thing. The word blackballed has a very significant and, and sinister connotation. I, I don't think you tell me if I'm wrong. I think people don't want to bring him in there because it'd be unusual to put a player of his stature into the role that he would now fit, and that seems like it would be a strange move. I don't think they're blackballing because they think he's a bad guy. Blackball comes from the fact that there are 450 jobs to 30 NBA teams he deserves to be on the roster. Same with Colin Kaepernick, same with Mark Jackson as a head coach. That's what it means. They, they, he yeah. should have a job, but he doesn't. What do you guys think? I, I just, I mean, I couldn't get past the fact that this dude think LeBron got juice right now to get Carmelo on the team. That, That's the biggest misnomer is that LeBron can get somebody signed to a basketball team. These people ain't going in. They, they not going into their front office saying, hey, let's get LeBron to come in and see what guys he want to bring on this roster. I don't think it necessarily works like that. You know, we just talked about with the Cleveland Browns, great players like Carmelo Anthony, they have attributes you can't see. He could impact a franchise. Maybe his best days are behind him, but – in terms of leadership, work ethic, how to develop yep. skills, he can bring a lot to it. It's a far gone conclusion that Melo should be. I'll on give the you team. a final word. Go. And he would have to prove that he would take a Jared Dudley role for a future Hall of Famer. And Melo wasn't on the banana boat. Um, that, 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 that's right. He wasn't. That's, that's true. That's true. So perhaps it was a false premise to begin with. Okay, we'll do more of this as we go. Let's go over to Laura. <laughs> Okay, backup quarterbacks are always the most popular guys on the team, unless you're the backup. So when two quarterbacks at Georgia and another quarterback at Ohio State fell on the depth chart, it was time for them to explore their options in the transfer portal. Here's Matt Berry. Well, both Jacob Eason and Justin Fields were on the sidelines at Georgia watching Jake Fromm thrive for the Bulldogs. Both young pups were bitten and went running for the safety of the transfer portal. Eason went home to Seattle to play at the University of Washington, while Fields went north to play at Ohio State, replacing top 10 pick Dwayne Haskins. This started a chain reaction in Columbus with another super recruit already on the roster. First, Tate Martell tweeted to Fields, Word of advice, don't swing and miss, especially not your second time. Perhaps feeling that he would be second on the depth chart, Martell entered the transfer portal and went to Miami after Fields entered the Buckeyes quarterback competition. I feel like transfer portal is a word that, or a phrase that people hear all the time right now. And if you don't follow the sport closely, you may not fully understand what it means. Laura, this is essentially football, right? Ohio State about to start a free agent quarterback right. this season. Yeah, and, and Justin Fields was a free agent. He allowed himself to enter the portal. It's actually quite easy for these guys to enter. They just have to alert their team they're going to enter. And then that means that all these schools can start contacting them and basically recruit them like free agency. So uh, Justin Fields is a big one, one that I think we're not 
talking enough about is Jacob Eason, who's at Washington, who we haven't seen in a year's time because it's been so long since he actually played. It's been longer than a year, actually. Uh, he's got a huge arm. He's somebody that could even be kind of an underrated NFL prospect. I could see him kind of sneaking into the first round, potentially, if he has a good year at Washington. Marcus, is this a good thing or a bad thing for the sport now that we've all talked about how the players are restricted and some of the things they can do, but the way they're doing it, is it a good thing or a bad thing? It, there's two parts, G. It's a great thing for players. It's a great thing for them to have the opportunity to leave a situation that won't they won't be successful in and have an opportunity to play. But also when you look at the college and the structure of it, it's a bad thing for how this college system has been set up for players to come in, be on scholarship, sit in a program for a year or two and play. It's, it's just totally different. I think it's a great thing, though, for the players. Yeah, there's somewhere around, I think, 2,000 players in the portal in this past year. Yeah. And so we just focus on the Justin Fields and the Jalen Hurts and the Jacob Eason's. But there's going to be a lot of people in that portal that will not get a scholarship in Division I football because they're thinking that the grass is greener somewhere else. And the other thing, each team is now going to have one quarterback that can play football. The other guy, the backup, has not played. Clemson's different. They got Chase Bryce, who came in last season. Everybody else, you got your starter, and if that guy gets hurt, where are you going to go? Can you just quickly clarify that? If you put your name in the portal and no one signs you, the school you are leaving does not have an obligation yeah, to bring you back, right? they don't right? have to, and a lot no. of them don't. So you are taking that risk. And I would say, too, I mean, if you talk to Tate Martell, who went to Miami, has been at multiple schools, went to Miami thinking he's going to be the starting quarterback. Jaron Williams ends up being named the starting quarterback. He's now taking reps at wide receiver. He may not like the transfer portal that much work out. anymore. Yeah. yeah. Your school says no thank You have nowhere You're to done. work out and right. prepare. So th th side. there is a a plus and a minus to all of this, and we'll see. It starts playing itself out this weekend. It is college football's 150th season, and it kicks off with a very important game. Saturday night in Orlando, 8th-ranked Florida taking on Miami, 7 Eastern. You can see it on ESPN and live on the ESPN app. Meanwhile, we hope you will get up with us tomorrow morning. Plenty of football highlights, including another look at highly touted rookies Daniel Jones and Dwayne Haskins. Plus, we'll get our first look at Cam Newton as he comes back from shoulder surgery. And we'll be just one day away from the start of college football. We'll tell you everything you need to know from A to Z. All that more. Get up with us tomorrow here on ESPN.